Hello, my name is Ron Sheffield. I'm a water resources engineer with the LSU Ag Center, and I'm here today at Instigator Ranch with John Price. Um, John, um, alligator um, production is, you refer to it as a ranch. Why isn't it, why don't you refer to it like a normal farm? Well, the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries back in the uh, 60s and 70s realized alligators needed to be protected. They created a program of protection that revolves around the alligator ranch. The rancher goes out into the marsh to take the eggs from the wild alligators and bring them back and incubate those eggs into captivity. Um, and the farmer has breeders in captivity. So the farmer has a closed system where the rancher has an open system. What we do is we bring those eggs into captivity, incubate them, raise them to a size of about four feet, and then we release some back to the marsh. Right now we're returning 12% of our herd in the form of a four foot alligator and that's increasing the population each year. How much of an impact has it had over the years? An amazing impact. Uh, we started out in 1985 with about 500,000 alligators, and today we have nearly 3 million alligators. Wow. We've got not only a great program of protection, but also an animal that I think nearly everyone in the world is intrigued by. So we allow people to come to Instigator Ranch and play with baby alligators and feed alligators and even hatch baby alligators in their hand. Wow. Now, when we have a, an alligator, um, what you said about four feet we go to market. Uh, how long does it take to go from a, a little baby alligator to a, to a four foot release size? Well, we, uh, in the old days, kept our alligators warmer. At, at 89 to 90 degrees, we can get an alligator to four feet in about 12 months. Um, we've since reduced the temperature uh, to try to produce a more beautiful alligator because some of our alligators do go to market for leather. We want to produce a beautiful alligator, so we're now raising our alligators at about 82 degrees, 80 to 82 degrees, and causing those alligators to grow slower because of the temperature. So it may take 16 months to, to 18 months to get an alligator to four feet now. What other products? Is there a meat product that's also um, taken from the alligator? Pretty much everything's taken from the alligator. We use the, the leather is the main value. Uh, the meat is probably the second, the, the second uh, greatest value in the alligator. And then we sell heads and teeth and feet. Um, As the, novelty you know, items. That's right. Okay. Now let's talk about the, the alligator production. Um, how are they grown inside of the houses? Well, we, uh, when they're born, we put them in the house. Uh, each day we, we wash them out, clean them up, drain their water into a pond. Uh, we feed the alligators daily. They pretty much have food available 24 hours a day. Um, and, and that's the routine. We feed them, we keep them warm, and they grow. Great. Um, what do you feed an alligator? We feed an alligator alligator chow. It comes straight out of a bag. Like uh, cereal? Yep, basically. Okay. Um, very much like dog food. Okay. And um, we feed them that. It's much higher in protein, 50% protein. Wow. Dogs and cats, lot. that's right. Dogs and cats, I think, get 20% or, or in that neighborhood protein. Uh, so we feed them a high protein diet and watch them grow. John, can we go over the, the waste management inside the barn? Uh, we have a flow well that is 2,300 foot deep and it produces uh, 83 degree water. So you don't have to heat that water at all. That's right. We don't heat anything, we don't even pump it. First, we drain the barns. All the waste water goes into a pond. We wash out the barns real good, getting the rest of the waste out, and then we fill with fresh water. The, the water sits in the pond, and it's basically a 100,000 gallon holding tank, and uh, then we have an irrigation system that irrigates that water out onto the land. About how often do you clean the barns? Um, we clean the barns daily, uh, sometime, well, actually every other day, but we have three barns, so we're cleaning every day, some barn, and we clean the barns every other day. So the alligator uh, wastewater that's coming out of the barn is producing an odor, and we irrigate it onto the land, which mystifies it and probably adds to the problem of the odor, and we'd sure like to solve that problem, and I understand you can help us with that. Well, I think we can. Some of the research that I've been doing with the um, Louisiana State University Ag Center not only um, helps to address the odor issue, but also phosphorus, which is a nutrient that we want to remove from a water quality perspective, as well as the bacteria. And we can also address the, the nitrogen content, which is definitely coming from that high protein feed that you're feeding. Fantastic. So this is our wastewater pond. Um, our barn's behind the pond 
drain into this pond. And uh, you can see on the, the far pipe, we actually have flow coming out of the, the, one of the barns um, from here. Um, tell me what you can do to make this better. Well, what we would do is we'd actually be treating the water um, on a daily basis coming right out of the barns. We would take that water and we'd process it through a treatment system very similar to what we have here. Um, this is a lime precipitation based um, treatment system. We use hydrated lime. Um, we mix it into a slurry like a milk, a very concentrated milk solution. We mix that with water that we pump from the, the pond. And when it reacts, it reacts very quickly in terms of seconds. And it um, binds with the phosphorus that's in the water as well as the solids. And it forms a, um, a flock or flakes in the water. And as those flakes se um, settle, they actually are settling out more of the nutrients um, as well as the solids in the water. So when the material overflows into the clarifier here, this large tank, all it does is gives the water a chance to slow down, to settle, and pretty much um, creates clear water. And that's amazingly clear water. Yes, and the, the phosphorus has been removed over 80% of the, the total phosphorus has been removed, and we've had a nine log reduction in total bacteria. This is water that we treated yesterday. In the clear water that we have up top, this would be what would be going into your, your pond. Yeah, that's amazing. This down here is the reacted calcium phosphate and other um, calcium products. This material can be um, land applied as a liming agent still, but you've got lime and phosphorus in it, so it's more than just lime. Or we can use it to in chemical processes where they need um, phosphorus, different phosphoric acid type processes. So even this byproduct that we have is still very valuable. To show you how quick this whole process works, I mean, uh, Troy, my graduate student, uh, is gonna, gonna help us here by getting a mixture of our um, wastewater that's been uh, mixed with the, the lime uh, milk mixture. And you can see here, thanks Troy, um, of just how quickly that flock is formed. Um, and so this is the key here, and you can see that right now it's already started to settle. And then as this material starts to settle down, it's just going to pack and pack further to where this was a sample that we took last night, that it'll pack down to be a much smaller volume. And then this is the clear water that overflows into the lagoon. It's amazing how quick it's, it's happening. It happens very quickly. Mm -hmm.